smell that? Kind of musty, oily beard. Must be Wheezy Monday. I'm holding our little doggy, Birdie. Yeah. How are you today? I have begun bullet journaling. That'll probably be the title of this video, so you already know that. I, uh, here's the thing. So what's a bullet journal? I think I'm gonna make a video out of this, but legitimately, like pretty much everything I'm doing, it's legitimately an attempt to improve some aspect of my life. Um, and the bullet journal is a specific type of journal that people have taken and made their own, but it, it was created by this guy, what's his name, Ryder? Ryder something. He has a YouTube channel. There's a how-to bullet journal. It's a 12 million view video that uh, is sort of the definitive invention of the bullet journal. Um, but then from that point on, you will find lots of other versions of it. You'll find lots of different people doing it their own way. And uh, it's basically just a way of journaling that you index the journal at the beginning and you list out uh, your year, basically, what tasks for, the, for each month. And then you list out by days of the month, you list out the tasks going through the whole month and then by day. And you index it and you take notes along the way. There's different ways to demarcate what got done, what didn't, and what will migrate to the next thing. Um, a collections list, so you take related tasks and you put them in a list. It's all uh, specific, like the, at least the original. Um, and then I think people have taken it and made it more of a visual thing. There's a lot of it on Instagram, um, how people make theirs look. It's, it, I think it's become more of a contest to see how beautiful your bullet journal can look. Um, I am sticking with the the main, I'm doing it purely for function. Like I'm trying to make sure that I uh, plan. I, I did a video a few few Wheezy Mondays ago about planning. And this is really just in a, trying to find the most effective way to plan my year. Because I want to have the whole year planned out. And the bullet journal was the first thing that really came to mind as the best way to to do it. And... Um, so I'm sticking with the, the original as much as it works for me. I might, I might change it a little here and there. Um, it's not pretty. It's also another thing that, um, wow, Birdie is laying real hard. She's a lazy dog and I like that about her. She's a little, definitely a lazier dog than, than our previous dog. Well, it's like she got heavier somehow. She was sitting, she was comfy, and then suddenly she added weight so that she could sink more into her lays. And uh, it's good, it's good. How you doing? How you doing there, Bert? Bert, come here, okay. Come here, Bertie, gotta adjust. Okay, so a thing that I'm doing that many bullet journalers may not like is I'm doing it digitally, as I do. Um, mostly because then I can check it on my phone, I can, um, I'm a horrible, I have horrible handwriting and I constantly change, like as I'm learning as I'm going, I'm trying to figure out the layout and then if I don't like it, I might want to change it later. So I am doing it digitally. However, I'm doing it with an app called, this is not a sponsor, an app called GoodNotes on my iPad and I'm uh, writing with the, the Apple Pen. So it's still me writing. It's still the, the physical act of writing and it feels more permanent uh, than just like typing something out and then deleting things. But if I don't like the layout, I can just like select things and move them, you know, Photoshop style. Uh, I'm gonna undo that though. And uh, 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 so it's working for me and it still feels like I'm writing in an actual journal. Um, and I've only, I've only done it for a few days now, but it seems to be working. It's basically, uh, you got your index, 
you got your so that's the the one bit of design I did like those little little buttons at the top and then you got your months and then you got your January and then the days in January and um, so far I think the act of writing physical writing uh, helps because I I do I still am using uh, Trello as a sort of list thing list making thing and for the day like I'll take what I wrote I wrote down my tasks for the whole week um, each day what I'm gonna what I want to get done and then on that day I'll go into Trello and make the list digital like typing style and then all of that action of writing it down and then putting it on Trello really keeps it fresh in my mind and ideally that'll keep me uh, motivated to do it to actually get the things done so far it's sort of working I'm at least aware of the things that I'm not doing more there's the danger of writing it down and feeling like that's the accomplishment itself just well it's written down in my journal so it's basically done <laughs> and then you don't do it uh, you got to actually do the things and so we'll see I think for me the most useful thing isn't going to necessarily be the day-to-day -day motivation but the the yearly planning I think if I can nail down all these wheezy videos I'm doing I have so I'm getting I'm getting the idea list is getting narrower and narrower and I want to do 15 videos in 2021 and uh, the list is starting to populate and then I'm going to assign it to each month it's like some months will have two some months will have one video but just if I will have those assigned later you want to get down birdie here here you go if I have those assigned later um, specifically assigned per month that's gonna get rid of a lot of stress because I think a lot of my stress comes from just what am I gonna do next what's the next thing to work on if that's already laid out there for me so good these videos sometimes there's a little there's a little bit of stress involved in like what am I gonna talk about today uh, and so then I have to sit there and sort of take notes or think about what's important to me now, what, what's been on my mind lately. Um, if I can get though, if I can get to the point where I'm planning these ahead, that, that'd be nice. Although with these, a lot of it has to do with more in the moment, like what I had just done the previous week. So I can't really plan further than a week out. Um, and it's often it's about the current video I'm, I'm doing. Like, I think bullet journaling is going to be a video, and this video is about bullet journaling. Look at that. Although, this video is only sort of about bullet journaling, big bullet journaling, because I've only been doing it for a few days. I don't have a lot to say. Um, and I'm, I'm still, it's still, the jury's still out of whether it's going to work or not. I don't know. But I have other things I want to talk about. There's a few other ideas I have um, regarding the yearly wheezy waiter plan birdie's making noises over there um distractions why not invite more distractions in my life let's get four dogs let's get eight cats a barracuda and that's it that's enough let's not overdo it you guys um i want to do something for these upcoming wheezy waiter videos that is a throwback somewhat to the old style wheezy i think i've gotten pretty good at making sure each video has a specific purpose has some use to it that has is not just silly fun ridiculousness um or just online community for online community's sake and nothing else uh, and so, with that in mind, I want to plan out these specific Wheezy videos, but then I want to throw in some recurring elements. I'm not, I mean, I already have sort of recurring elements. My parents show up. I want to do, I want to, I may want to have a little story arc for my parents. Obviously, the scenes I have with my parents in the main channel video <clears throat> videos are real life. It's just me turning the camera on and... Maybe there's a little editing to cut for time, but it's really just a documentary of the way my parents actually are in real life, hard style. 
But they have lives outside of that topic at hand for that video. So I may want to create a little story arc or follow along a story arc, I mean, that, they, that they're living uh, for the year for each video. So that might be fun. That's one idea if I, if I motivate myself to do it. Another might be a sort of just personal story arc that just shows up at the end of each video. Maybe involving my clones because I, have, I still have, I deal with my clones every day. Um, some little thing at the end of each video that sort of uh, people who come back frequently will be rewarded for their efforts with a continuing storyline of some kind. Um, okay, that's great. It's great. All the noises you're making, Birdie. Love it. You do you. But maybe let's just let rein it in a little for now. Yeah, you laid down. Good girl. Good girl. Can you see her over there? Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. That's a good girl. Come here. Come here, Birdie. You want to come here? You want to come here? Yeah. Okay. Um, if for those who are listening and not watching, Birdie was sitting over there, and then she laid down, and then she walked to me, and it was glorious. I don't think you know what to do right now, do you? Yeah, your China is putting Ada to bed, reading her books before nap, and and uh, I'm just sitting here talking to this weird thing right here, and you're just you don't know what to do right now, do you? Do ya. Do ya, birdie. You don't know what to do right now, do ya? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. For those listening, I just brought the camera over and gave a close up to, <laughs> I mean, every time I do anything, for those listening. Um, anyway, recurring elements. I think I wanna bring that back more of a community aspect. I don't know if I, I want to try to avoid doing things the same way that I used to, or figure out a new way, but only like a very, a smaller portion of the video because it's nice to have a full purpose with a, with more meaning behind it, chronicling an experience, a deep research about why do people like something and then throw in the, the silly things. I want to do it for a few reasons. One, I want to, I think it gives people who don't necessarily care. The people who like what I do and they like the channel and they're subscribed and they want to see the next thing. It, it, if they don't necessarily care about the specific w topic I'm talking about. Like not everyone cares about coloring for a month. Not everyone cares about Rubik's cubes. But if there's a recurring thing that's the same, that's, that's around the same sort of thing with every video, it gives, it gives people a reason to come back other than the, the dumb important, the dumb pseudo important topic I'm talking about. And then for other people, I'll still be talking about the one-off topic and then they'll be interested in that. It's the best of both worlds. Or maybe it'll be the worst of both worlds. That'll be fun. No, it won't. I'll try not to make it the worst of both worlds, but that way I'll have like the each video has its own purpose, and then there it's like it's like uh, the X Files. Um, often they would have stories. Sometimes the X Files was all it had the big story arc going on behind. A lot of shows do this, but X Files is a classic example of the big story arc going on behind the scenes, and then the monster of the week. But sometimes with the X-Files, they would have the monster of the week, and then at the end, they would have, like, Smoking Man show up or some larger story happening. And so they had they had both worlds. And I remember when I first started watching the show, um, seeing an episode, really liking it, and then, then they'd have the overarching story at the end, and I was very confused. I was like, what? What's going on? I remember... Being very confused, but then more intrigued to learn. That's not gonna be everybody. A lot of people will be confused and be like, I'm out of here. I don't like being confused. I don't like things I don't understand. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go eat. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> um, but not everyone, it's not for everyone.
but it, you still get the monster of the week. That's my point. And that's kind of what I want to do when I attempt. And now that I'm planning this for a year out, I think I can. I just got to come up with the, the, the ideas. Ugh, right? No, not ugh. It's fun. China had an idea. China had uh, um, an idea. Did I uh, write these down? I thought I wrote down her idea somewhere. I think I wrote it in in my journal. But um, her idea was like tying knots. I got to learn a new knot at the end of every video. I don't know. It'd be something like this, maybe. Or like, I learned this new knot. And then at the end of the year, just like, I learned 15 knots. I could do a whole video about it, about knot tying or something, something like that. Um, I remember Zay Frank did, uh, back when he did his, some other YouTubers have done this too since, but Zay Frank, when he did his daily, week daily thing, the show with Zay Frank way back in 2006, um, every weekday he was doing things. He, he'd do several recurring things. And one of them was, I think he had a chess game going on. He'd, he'd give out his chess move and then others would, I don't know how it worked technically, but um, I think others have done that. Something like that, you know, do more stuff like that. Bring it back rather than, see, I think my worry about that kind of thing was, uh, so I, w I went from kind of nonsense, directionless silliness for a long time um, to daily vlog kind of style, day in the life style. Casey Neistat style, to, I don't know, I was experimenting with a lot of different short form things for a while and I didn't, it was kind of directionless. There didn't really, there wasn't a lot of carryover in theme. Um, but sometimes I would, sometimes I'd have, like there was the handstand thing was a recurring thing. Um, and then the recurring clone jokes. But I went from that to the 10 minute plus specific topic videos. And I went hard into the specific topic videos, the challenge videos, the why do people like videos, um, where my entire universe becomes that one video I'm making. Not my enti the entire Wheezyverse, but also my personal entire world. I'm just thinking about that one video. Um, and I think I was afraid to go back to the recurring stuff because uh, I wanted this to work. I wanted to, I want, I wanted each video to be its own thing, and I wanted each video to um, succeed on its own, on its own merits, about what it's only about. But now, I think I want to bring it back. I think I want to go back a little bit more to the recurring stuff because I think I'm, I think I can, I'm comfortable enough now in the. Uh, the one-off stuff that I think I can I can do both. The the danger is other than alienating some of the audience possibly is the uh, the energy that I have uh, like putting in the time for the recurring stuff taking away from the actual quality of the main channel video. I don't know. Worth a try though, right? I think so. I'm going to do it. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was things that I've been consuming lately. I, I have a goal of right reading 20 books this year. I don't think it's going to happen, actually. I'm a little... I, maybe I'm, I should have shot for smaller because the book I'm currently reading, Obama's new book, Promised Land, um, 600 pages, and I don't... I think I'd have to read, which it's doable. I think I have to read every book in like, I don't remember the exact number, but like two weeks to get to 20. Is that right? Something like that, two and a half weeks. It's a lot of pages per day to read for a 600 page book. Um, unless I, you know, really give it some significant time, which is the goal. I want to read more. Um, Anyway, I'm going to go for 20. And the book I'm currently reading, Obama's, Pro Obama's Promised Land, it's pretty good. It's like what you'd expect. It's it's act the I think the best value I'm getting out of it is the it's kind of inspiring to 
see so far he's kind of just chronicling his um campaigning and rise to the presidency and it's kind of it's inspiring to see like how uh you know you're throwing yourself into something big like that without within it, no guarantee that it's going to work just um buckling buckling down and sticking to i mean obviously this is political and because i brought up obama there's going to be so many <sighs> So many people who are who are just going to discount everything that I'm saying about this book, even though it's I'm not talking specifically about Obama, um, necessarily about the importance of sort of just sticking to your principles and fundamentals to to get where you want to go. You can argue whether he stuck to him while he was president or not. I'm talking about campaigning, um, and it's just it's just inspiring to see to see like how how you can do big things with no gear if you work really hard with no guarantee that it's going to work you know it, it just gives me confidence to try to try big things you know um that's a book i'm reading right now i just finished educated i talked about that already i believe in something else i talked to what did i talk about that in did i talk about that in wheezy monday i don't know educated was a real good book uh both of those inherently political, so I expect a lot of you to recommend political, other political books, probably ca trying to counter the ones that I just mentioned. Looking forward to it. Um, so, uh, movies I'm watching are um, getting into Chinese movies lately. I watched the movie Shadow on Netflix. Uh, 2000, I believe it came out like last year. Or two years ago, 2019. Which is two years ago now. Um, or maybe it was 2018, I don't know. But it's a, what do you call it, Wush, Wuxia? Um, genre, that's a genre of films, or just a genre of entertainment in China. That's about basically about ancient China, but making martial artists and various figures in ancient China into sort of superheroes. Uh, that's where you get like the crouching tiger, hidden dragon, like the flying martial arts stuff and other types of, I'm no, I'm no expert in wuxia, okay? Or wuxia, I don't know how you pronounce it. Let's Let's see how you pronounce it. How to pronounce wuxia. Wuxia. I believe it's wuxia. Why won't it just come? Yeah, wuxia. W or wuxia. Someone said wuxia. I think it's wuxia. W-U-X-I-E-A or I-A. W-U-X-I-A. Um, anyway, Shadow is a great one. I loved it. I... It, and the guy, Zhang Yamu, um, or Zhang Yamao, uh, directed it. He has been around for a long time, so then I just started checking out some of his other movies. He did a movie called Hero, and a movie called House of Flying Daggers. I haven't seen House of Flying Daggers yet. Saw Hero. Loved it. I can tell, it's, I can tell Quentin Tarantino was greatly inspired by Zhang Yamu's by, by Hero or House of Flying Daggers. I don't know. It's like, um, especially for Kill Bill. I don't know which one came first, Kill Bill or these movies, but he, movies like this, he was greatly inspired by for Kill Bill. And, um, and I think like Django and Inglorious Bastards, the, the sort of uh, uh, alternate history looking back like he's taking what you know they're doing with ancient ancient china and making heroes he did that with the south pre-civil war south on uh, the u.s or the world war ii um brad pitt's clan in world war ii um anyway great hero is fantastic shadow is fantastic and then i watched other zhang yimau um 
Raise the Red Lantern. Not a wuxia style movie, but, all, but a historical Chinese movie. Sad, disturbing, slow. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, <clears throat> basically about a rich Chinese, I don't know if he was a businessman or a diplomat or a political figure of some kind, I don't remember. But he has several concubines and it's about one of them, mainly. And it's uh, not, uh, not, not happy, necessarily, but really, really well done. Then I watched another one, an older one he did, called Ju Dao. Really low budget appearing, anyway. Chinese, also good. A bit more of a challenge for, like, I felt like it was, pacing-wise, a bit more of a challenge for me. But uh, Ju Dao was really good. Um, I, I think that's where my, my Chinese movie, oh yeah, and, oh yeah, this one came to me, it's not on my notes. What was it called? Uh, City of Last Things? I think that was on Prime or Hulu or Netflix. City of Last Things, I believe it's called. It's like, it's about a guy's life from starting from the future. A, f a humanity, f future of humanity, going back like 20 years and then going back another several years. So like there's a story in his future, a story in his middle, and a story in when he's younger. And also dark, not, and violent. I thought it was good. It's pretty good. Uh, I didn't love it as much as like Hero or Shadow, but but I'm like re I'm really into Chinese movies lately for some reason. Um, and is that what it's called? City of Last Things. Yes, City of Last Things. Um, I also watched Ad Astra, which was uh, was fine. I didn't I didn't really like the narration in Ad Astra. Found it pretty unnecessary and um, kind of obvious and like telling me things I already know. I don't like that. I don't like that in movies. Unnecessary narration. Um, in general, okay, I guess. Sci-fi, future, Brad Pitt. Mr. Pitt goes to Mars. They could have called it. They should have called it. I don't know. Um, and I watched Midnight Sky, the George Clooney version, I guess you could say. And also, eh, probably more. I, I liked Ad Astra a little more. Um, Freaky Friday. Now, there's a movie. I watched it last night again. I watched it a few months ago. I watched it with China. No, not with China upon her recommendation because she had already seen it. And then I watched it last night again with China. Freaky Friday. Lindsay Lohan and um, um, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's a perfect movie, you guys. It's so tightly paced and written. You, I know it seems it seems like a silly Disney teen, I guess you could say rom-com, sci-fi fantasy rom-com, I guess. I don't know. Great, though. Really, really well done. The guy, right bef right after that movie, the director went on to direct Mean Girls. Everyone loves Mean Girls. No one ever talks about Freaky Friday. It's really good. Maybe people do talk about Freaky Friday. I don't know. I don't talk to people. Anyway, Freaky Friday is good. I liked it. Um, another thing I want to do this year is listen to more music, because new music in particular, or at least in the past five years music, because I haven't been doing that. I have a friend who emailed me out of the blue telling me that, uh, or asking me what my favorite music was out of your favorite albums. And I had, I mean, other than Jake, my friend Jake Jarvie, who does uh, Pineapple Boy Films, he does a year, end of year best of, uh, which I, I'm in. China and I listed our favorite movies, books, music, and everything. But other than him, separate friend, which I'll, I'll link to that best of down there, down in the dubes, which is what Jake refers to it as. Um, but other than that, separate friend asked me about albums, and I was like, I don't have any. What's the matter with me? I don't listen to, I don't seek out new music. Basically, I listen to um, uh, background music. 
while I'm working. And I have, I'm on a newsletter that emails me daily new good background music to play. I don't even pay attention to what I'm listening to. I'm like, oh, they describe it briefly. I'm like, okay, I'll listen to that. And then I forget what I'm listening to. It's just, it's nice background music. I listen to chromatics a lot in the background, sometimes classical music. Um, but I'm not, I'm not actively seeking out anything. I'm not, and I'm definitely not actively listening to lyrics or albums and paying attention to whatever journey the artist wants to take me on. I'm, I'm not doing that. I haven't done that in a while. Um, it's always listen while doing something else. What's the matter with me? What have I become? What have we become as a society with our Spotify's and our, our what have you automated music being thrown at us rather than being intentional about what we're listening to and listening to it closely. Obviously, we don't have to do that. And we are all busy people, I understand. But it's a whole other form of entertainment that I'm sort of, I'm being cavalier about, you know? And uh, I want to listen to more albums. So I think my, that friend of mine, actually, I said, I'm not having to listen to albums. He suggested 30 albums in 30 days. I might actually do that. That might be a video. I listen to 30 albums in 30 days and make the whole thing about how we're taking in music now. Maybe I'll interview people about it, about, you know, how we should take in music. Or, I mean, not, that's a, the wrong question. Anyone taking music any way they want, but how we do now versus how we, how we used to, or like how, what would be a more effective way to listen to music and then what does it do for you? And um, so I might do a 30 albums, 30 days. I'm sure a lot of you will recommend some, but music is such a personal thing that I'm definitely geared towards indie rock. Um, basically, if you listen to satellite radio, channel 35, that's what I listen to almost all the time. It's like new um, indie rock music, basically. That's t that tends to be what I gravitate towards. Uh, I'll definitely try, I'll definitely venture out of my comfort zone for this video as much as I want to, but I, but I, but I have, I have my own style of music and, uh, not my own style, but I have a specific style that I tend to like more. And I know a lot of you are going to suggest things and I'm going to be like, well, it's not my thing. But I, 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 I hate that attitude about me. I hate that about myself. I want to be more open-minded about it. But I know, but I, I generally know how I'm going to react to certain types of music. Um, and we, we all do, we all do that. We all fall into our little corners and close our minds off to other things. And that's, that's human nature. It's unfortunate, but it's the way things are. And maybe listening, maybe actively seeking out music that I wouldn't tend to listen to, maybe that'll make me a, a more, more thoughtful person. You know? I don't know. Anyway, that's one thing I want to do. Another video idea, which I've talked about before probably, I've thought about doing, I'm kind of scared of it, but I might try, is Stephen King's writing schedule for a month. Um, I don't know, I don't know what I'll write, Probably, I guess that would have to mean I'd have to attempt a novel, which I kind of tried to do for the 10 minute rule video. I've since not been active with that. But with Stephen King's writing schedule, definitely get something written if I follow it. I can't remember exactly what his, how many words he writes a day, but it's a lot. Um, and if I, if I attempt something like that, it'd be interesting to see where, where that goes. Um, and that's about it for a Wheezy Monday, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around and listening to my ramblings. Uh, my dog is sleeping over there. Can you see her? There's kind of a black lump right there. Um, that's it. Still got that Wheezy Scholarship going. If you want to check that out, Wheezy Creator Scholarship, link down there. Jake's year end. Best of, and um, I'm just gonna keep on uh, planning. First video, first main channel video probably won't be out until March. I don't even know what it is yet. Maybe it's probably the bullet journaling one, but I don't know for sure. Still haven't planned it specifically yet. I got some days here. I'm taking my time a little bit because I 
you know, this is sort of a break time, two months off of making videos and got to enjoy my life too. You know, if you got to, you got to, you got to feed the beast, as they say, have experiences so that you can create things based on those experiences, you know, get off my case. Ah!